This is uh, Professor Alan Hong's uh, Oscilloscope Lab concept number four. I'm going to talk about the uh, vertical gain, which is uh, adjusted in terms of a volt per division. Each of these major lines is a division. Okay. If I had adjusted my oscilloscope so that each of these divisions is equal to 5 volts, what would 10 volts look like? 10 volts would look like this. Assuming this is 0, it would look like this. 5, 10. If I had, uh, what would negative 10 volts look like? Well, assuming that that's 0, okay, I assigned this area to be 0. Negative 10 would look like this, 5, 10. So we're going to, I'm going to show you a power application. Um, although oscilloscope was designed to measure signals, I'm going to touch on a power concept. Um, if you took 10 volts DC and put it across a resistor, the resistor would emit a certain amount of heat. So here's my question to you. So here's 10 volts DC. Okay. Now, if I wanted to heat that resistor the same amount, but I wanted to heat it with AC, do you think I would put across it a AC signal, say that's 10 volts peak to peak? So that's zero. So here it goes up to... 10, so 5, 10. Do you think that would heat it the same amount? The, the answer is no, it would not. Why wouldn't it? Because your best voltage is right here, 10. Then it drops down to 0. And then it drops down to negative 10. So negative 10 heats it, heats it equally as much as positive 10. But all this other area, it's less than 10. It even goes down to 0. So your peak voltage on your AC is not an equivalent heating or powering ability as a DC voltage. So 10 volts DC would definitely heat a resistor warmer than if you applied a peak 10 volt AC signal. What is the relationship? Well, there's a simple mathematical relationship. Um, to determining what kind of AC voltage you would need to equal the equivalent DC voltage to do the same thing. And the term we use is RMS, which stands for root mean square, which is a mathematical operation. RMS, for your sake, you can call it effective. You can think of it as an effective voltage. So what would be the effective voltage AC to achieve the same effect if it were DC? Well, it so happens that if you knew the peak voltage AC, and if you multiply it, if you multiply it, I'm sorry, if you knew the peak voltage, the peak voltage AC, and you wanted to get an equivalent voltage in DC, you would divide it by the square root of 2. So if this was 10, you divide that by the square root of 2, and you come up with something like about 7 volts. Okay. Likewise, in the opposite manner, if I had an effective AC voltage, RMS, and I wanted to know what is its peak value. So if I knew its RMS value, its effective value, I wanted to know its peak value, I would multiply it times the square root of 2. So you either multiply or divide to get the greater or lesser value. And 
the greater value is the greater value is always the peak of the AC and not its equivalent DC equivalent. Um, so we're going to do a little experiment. Now you get this you have AC coming out of your wall your wall socket right that you plug in. So what I did is I took the oscilloscope and I directly hooked it up to a wall plug. There it is. Yep, I hooked it right into the wall. Yes, I did. And we're going to look at the peak voltage. So, um, do a little adjustment here. That is what's coming out of your wall. My wall, at least. Kind of ugly. I don't know why it's not a nice smooth uh, wave. There may be something riding. We have some industrial uh, people locally who are introducing harmonics on our AC line somewhere. I don't know. So it's uh, imperfect. Uh, we got a cat visiting us. So hope you're not allergic to cats while I'm doing your uh, lab report thing here. So um, what I want you to do is I want you to determine the peak voltage of this AC that's coming out of your wall that you you know you plug your hair dryer into. So here's this here's the zero right here. Okay. Now what I did is I have established now don't look at these controls because I'm using a special probe. So don't look at this. It might uh, confuse you. So I'm telling you that each of these major divisions is 50 volts. So this is zero. So that's a major division, that's a major division, that's and that's a, a percentage of a so I want you to figure out the number of major divisions from zero. And I want you to mult so that's 50 volts per division. I want you to figure out the peak voltage. Okay. And from that peak voltage, I want you to tell me what is the RMS voltage coming out of your outlet of my house, which will be the same as yours approximately. And the number should not surprise you because you've heard this number or it's going to be awful close to the number that you've heard before. Um, so do that. So you have to figure out, do you need to multiply it by point, by the square root of uh, two or multiply it, right? Then I have another question for you. Let's say... Um, I'm going to charge a 12 volt battery. And the other way you can charge a 12 volt battery is you need a voltage that's slightly higher than 12 volts to get current to go into it. Okay? And let's say the, the only thing I have available to me is a 9 volt transformer that has 9 volts RMS. 9 volts effective. So my question to you is, is, is the peak voltage coming off that 9-volt RMS transformer, if I were to pass that through a diode, is that voltage high enough to start charging that 12-volt battery? So you just do some of the math and just show me your math. So it's a yes or no. Um, that's it. So that, that's it for the, uh, the vertical gain. I didn't want to torture you with that too much. But I think you'll be surprised. The voltage, the voltage is associated with your uh, your house, your household voltage. Uh, good luck, and uh, maybe do a couple more demonstrations. And uh, what do you want there, Newman? Newman wants to get in on the act here. What's up, buddy? You guys have a great day.